as a result of guys like you flying this airplanes like like this. This is a story a about a pilot. And it was critical <clears throat> that we made no mistakes. And a POW. At first, I, I questioned whether I would ever come back. 76-year-old Joe Kreka of North Bend saw the worst of the Vietnam War. While flying a mission in November of 1966, his F-4 fighter was shot down. Kreka was captured and taken to the prisoner of war camp known as the Hanoi Hilton, alongside now Senator John McCain, where Kreka was at times tortured while waiting six and a half years to be free. In December of 1972, the U.S. military sent the B-52 bombers in the most intense air attack of the entire Vietnam War called Operation Linebacker II. At 24 years old, Jim Farmer was behind the controls of one of those bombers. We felt like we were really doing something meaningful, and as it turned out, it really was. Hanoi was hit so hard, the North Vietnamese returned to the negotiating table and agreed to release the 591 American POWs, including Kreka. If it wasn't for guys like you and this airplane, I wouldn't be here. Well, uh, it was... Uh, My bones would be in Hanoi. It seemed only fitting. Six crew members, two forward, uh, the two pilots. We follow this retired Air Force pilot. Come on up, I'll show you. This is... Through the hatch, up two ladders. Throttles. And into the cockpit uh, of this B-52, taking a moment for a little people. reflection about this old bomber. What's it like to be back in the cockpit of one of these? Uh, it, it, it tell you what, it brings back some, a lot of memories. Nicknamed the Midnight Express, this B-52 Stratofortress, now owned by the Museum of Flight, has been parked on the grass in the middle of Everett's pain field for 26 years, mostly untouched, definitely unappreciated. I was thrilled to learn that the museum had a B-52. I was disappointed to learn that they, there were no plans for it because it just was too big and was too expensive to do anything with. So he and Kraka and the original crew that flew the Midnight Express on that operation over Vietnam got together on the 40th anniversary of the air assault and launched a new mission. To save the B-52 that's been languishing up here for 26 years. And we decided it just can't sit there. And uh, we, this, that's when we started Project Welcome Home. Knowing how important this old warbird is to Joe and Jim and so many other veterans, the Museum of Flight saw an opportunity making it the centerpiece of a new memorial park, paying tribute to the aircraft of the Vietnam War while honoring those who flew and supported them. This is what it will look like once completed, joined by a statue of a returning airman being welcomed home. So we're gonna fix this puppy up and we're gonna make it a tribute for, uh, for everybody, well, all the guys that didn't come back and it's going to look great, and it's going to have a final resting place down at the Museum of Flight. Crews have been going like gangbusters to restore the B-52. <laughs> riveting panels to replace the plane's eroding skin, which will soon be repainted. It's like homecoming, and for these guys to see this airplane to go back into a place where it's going to be memorialized. You know, it's going to be really cool. Real proud to be able to work on the airplane. Tom Cathcart has been restoring aircraft for the museum for almost 23 years and has never seen a restoration effort quite like this. It's really the veteran involvement in this program that sets it apart from all the other kind of things that we've done. A long-awaited salute to a bomber that meant so much to their war and to the pilots who fought to save it. I think this airplane has a soul and a spirit of its own. Uh, and it's been waiting for something like Project Welcome Home to happen.